And Dreesen came out with their third version, third year of their top 100 B2C marketplace ranking. We dig in and find some new uh, players in there that caught my eye. We've got the latest version of the Andreessen Marketplace 100 report. They've now been doing this for a couple of years and it's an interesting ranking. Again, it's Andreessen, so anything they do is gonna get a lot of interest. There are some really cool companies. I saw some really cool individual companies that I wanna highlight on this list. But then I don't know, just the methodology for how they're ranking this is kind of suspect. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit, but let's talk about some of the ones that I thought just were really cool. This one is called Teachers Pay Teachers, the go-to platform created by teachers for teachers to access the community content and tools they need to teach at their best. Founded in 2006, TPT provides a marketplace for teachers to exchange instructional materials and access easy to use digital tools. They have a catalog of over 5 million pieces of educator-created content and more than 7 million educators, including 85% of the pre-K pre -K through 12 U.S. teachers. Wow, right? Um, this was a new, this wasn't even on the top 100 last year. Completely new addition to the Andreessen 100, and it came in at number eight, right? So it means they got to be doing some pretty serious volumes. So I looked this company up, and... Why I thought it was interesting just beyond what they're doing is it's kind of like a ghost. So they said they were founded in 2006 on their site, which is also kind of suspect because, you know, my sources say that uh, the company was acquired by Scholastic in 2006. How are they founded and then acquired in the same year? Kind of bizarre. Then they were um, sold out of Scholastic to the company's management in 2009. Uh, okay. And then they raised a big round of $64 million five years later in 2014. And that was it. They haven't raised any other money since. So presumably the, you know, the company is profitable eight years without raising any money was maybe like kind of co-created by Scholastic. They said they were found in 2006, and then my thing says they were acquired in 2006, right? That seems too coincidental. So I want to say might have been pseudo founded kind of with or maybe like by people that were part of Scholastic and then left Scholastic to go start this thing or something. There's got to be some deeper story there. I don't, I'm not privy to it. This to me is begging for some kind of strategic tie up with one of these large uh, kind of educational content companies, right? Which there are a few of them. They've been doing a lot of M&A and consolidation recently. But this looks like a marketplace that has huge, huge penetration amongst the educated community, is profitable, generating, you know, certainly positive free cash flow, really has a monopoly on this kind of user-generated, like teacher-generated content space. Uh, and I'm sure is making a bunch of other investments that would be highly synergistic with a kind of large traditional, uh, you know, educational publisher, right? That, and all those players are trying to figure out how do they embrace new digital business models and create some moats uh, from the large tech monopolies that are making huge, huge uh, inroads with the education institutions. You know, I'm talking about the Google and the Apples of the world, of course, Amazon of the, of the world really trying to embed themselves in that space. So if I'm a, if I'm a big publisher of educational content, uh, I'm a little nervous and looking for things just like this, right? Like I wasn't even on the top hundred last year. It's not like this company just magically rose to stardom in the past year, right? They're obviously making moves for, for years leading up to this current year's ranking on the top 10, but I don't even think they're on Andreessen's radar. Right, which which just goes to show you a couple of interesting things. One, how many niches you're seeing marketplaces embed themselves in, you know, what what look like small little niches, like who would have thought, right? Teacher generated kind of content, little quizzes and puzzles and course instructions, right? Like, um, but yeah, you got a wildly successful business here if they raise sixty four million dollars. Uh, eight years ago, right? They definitely had a lot of traction back then, let alone what they're doing now.
That looks like a very cool company. This one was crazy. This one's top 12, also a new addition to the ranking this year. Uh, it's called TCG Player. This thing is basically to buy and sell trading cards, like physical trading cards, magic cards, Pokemon cards, Dragon Ball uh, cards. Are like Star Wars cards not cool anymore? Oh, here they are, Star Wars cards. I used to have Star Wars cards growing up. TCG is is raising debt, right? I mean, again, these like if you're raising debt means you got nice cash flows. You don't need to raise equity. Um, you know, the the lender looks at your cash, your profitability. You know, you're not hemorrhaging money, right? You're not going to get Vista, which is a very sophisticated kind of private equity tech investor, gave these guys. $35 million in debt financing last year. You don't get those deals unless you really have a strong uh, business. I mean, you look at the other players on these top 100, these are serious multi, multi billion dollar players on, like, look at this. Those two companies beat out Outdoorsy. Outdoorsy raised $100 million last summer at a $1.6 billion valuation, right? That's number 16. You got these two new players here within the top 12, which were never on the list before, ever, right? Which means they were not on Andreessen's radar, went right into the top 12 with Teachers Pay Teachers at number eight and TCG Player at number 12, right? You, I mean, you look at these businesses, you go, wow, right? I mean, that is, this is, uh, I mean, that's the, 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 mo the craziest takeaway to me out of this whole list. Is like, not, I'm not blaming Andreessen that they missed this, but it just goes to show you how much innovation is actually going on, right? That even a company like Andreessen does not have full visibility on the spectrum of like market, of marketplaces getting material traction, that these guys are new to the list. And this is like the, at least the third year running for this list. Beat out FAIR, which was our top B2B marketplace ranking. We did a B2B marketplace ranking, which we are about to do a refresh on. So stay tuned for that. But FAIR was our, on our inaugural list, which came out last year of the top 50, FAIR was our number one. And boy, did we nail that, that ranking. Uh, FAIR, since our ranking came out, raised a, a $400 million round in November of 2021 at a $12 billion valuation. What's also weird about this Andreessen list is this is literally the only company in wholesale on the list, right? One on one. But like, I thought this was, you read the thing and it says 100 ranking, a ranking of the largest consumer facing marketplaces. But then they put fair on here at 15, which they even label them as wholesale. Okay. You go to fair's website, they're selling to retailers who then buy the products and sell those to consumers. But this is not a consumer facing marketplace. This is a B2B marketplace and it's massive. So A, I don't know, the Andreessen ranking is a little bit wonky here. Okay. That's point one. Point two is there's more that are new to the list and in the top 20. Still doesn't make sense to me. I don't get it. That are just are not exciting. Like gold belly. I don't know. How did gold belly catch you by surprise? I don't get it. Beating out fair, $12 billion valuation. These guys are just popping onto the list. I guess it's tough really for Andreessen to do this list because, you know, they're kind of conflicted. Like, wouldn't you just want to put all of Andreessen's portfolios on here? Like, how are you going to, are you going to, they're not really saying we're ranking these companies based upon the future potential. They're kind of looking at it on a historical basis, right? So they've got a lot of ticketing companies on this list because they're saying, look, the ticketing companies have seen huge jumps in volume because, because now the lockdown, lockdowns are gone. Hopefully they stay gone uh, and people are going out to events again. So, hey, look, the ticketing companies are blowing up, right? But, you know, what's more interesting, the way we did our, our ranking of the top 50 was to kind of say, who do we think are best positioned for the 50, right? Or of these, these 50, we think have the, the highest potential based upon their historical, but also where we think they're going. That to me is more interesting, but hey, okay, I'm a little biased too, but hey, that's kind of just how I would think about doing it. But I guess these guys, much harder for them to do that because obviously the ones that they think 
they're the most bullish on for the future they've invested in. So it's an interesting list nonetheless. I'm sure, you know, go check it out. Uh, you'll find some names that, that stick out to you and maybe some that don't. If you like this video, go check out our video talking about our top 50 B2B marketplace ranking. And we've got another video talking about how many the largest market cap companies, right? So the largest companies in the world and how many of those are platforms.